podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here, and thanks for joining me on another episode of Strategy Mob. Today, I have two very, very influential guests in the automotive industry. Can I use the word influential? Is that okay? I, only if you could spell it. All right, fine. I won't <laughs> use the word. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Michael Cirillo and the notorious Glenn Lundy. Thank you guys for taking the time to jam with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, it's an honor to be here and super excited to have all kinds of fun. Uh, wasn't 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 really expecting to see um, Cirillo today. I kind of get uh, I see him enough, you know, throughout the week. So adding another Cirillo to the calendar. Man, was, Glenn, uh, have you had have you had work done since last time we <laughs> talked? I, I would say whatever you're doing, five percent more, and then call it quits. There we go. Now that's how we start a podcast off. By the way, it's just a nice low blow to the gut. That's that's just how we do it on this show. Um, oh, poor Jason, <laughs> stuck right here in the middle. Like no, this literally, is, this is stuck one in right the middle. middle. <laughs> stuck in the middle of you two. Yeah, this will be a fun ride. Um, oh my goodness. Now the cool thing is, if we ever fly together. I don't actually have to ever be stuck in the middle of you because we don't sell the middle seats anymore. Which is exciting it was yeah. oh, i digress i know isn't that that's one thing i'm looking forward to about getting back to the norm is not having to sit in a middle seat the new uh, normal no middle seat all right i know it's the best for everyone out there that's watching and listening right now and you know for the three people out there that don't know who you gentlemen are let's start off with a couple origin stories michael i'll have you go first how did you get started in the automotive industry i must have been like five and i was like dude when i grow up <laughs> I want to be in the car business. <laughs> no, you know what? We actually, um, and, and this will probably feed into the larger narrative of what we're going to talk about today, I, I'd assume. Um, it, it was an evolution. Um, and and times like this excite me because I know what kind of evolution can come as a result, what kind of innovation can come as a result. But for those that don't believe in evolution, I mean, we started publishing telephone directories in the early 80s, right? And and if you don't know what a telephone book is, my computer monitors right now are being propped up by the telephone book that somehow still shows up at my doorstep. Um, and, and, you know, from there and just our marketing background, we saw an opportunity to compete against some of the big players in this space, uh, whose names shall not be mentioned. Uh, but, uh, it's the, the Voldemort of the, the industry. The Voldemort, um, I like that. That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, they, they who shall not be named. Um, <clears throat> and we just said, hey, look, there's an opportunity here to do right by uh, the businesses in this space to be a little bit more strategic with the way they message and brand themselves. And so we migrated from publishing telephone directories into a magazine and then from magazine to full-on digital shop in the early 2000s. That's awesome. And we thank you for being a part of our in, of this industry. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> hey, Glenn, for yourself, man. How would you get started into the started in the industry? Well, one of the, you know, one of the things that you'll learn quickly is um, you know, Michael Cirillo and I are very uh very 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 different. So he has a very polished nice fancy story of how he got into automotive and he built and from the hard working phone books and development and all that from i got this girl now i got this girl that i barely knew knocked up that's where it started for me right <laughs> i got her i got her knocked up and here i am i'm young i'm in college this girl's having a kid i'm like i mean we had literally like broken up the day we find out she's having a kid i'm like this is crazy what I'm going to do, right? So I drop out of college. I started selling America online. I did like telemarketing phone sales for about a year, a little over a year. And then I read an ad in a newspaper that said, make $5,000 a month guaranteed. And I was like, bro, if I can make five grand a month, that's it, dude. Like I'll retire on a beach somewhere in no time. And so I went and I applied at Planet Nissan Subaru in Flagstaff, Arizona. They hired me on the spot and the rest, as they say, is history. Flagstaff, I kind of wonder Arizona. what would have happened though if they found out about all those late blockbuster returns. Like, would they still have hired you? Would they still have guaranteed that five grand a month? 
Dude, that, I'm just so glad they didn't do background checks or anything like that back then, bro. He, he but even still, if they would have. The I mean, it was the car business. So they Glenn still got a Glenn still got an old copy of uh, Three Ninjas that he hasn't returned. <laughs> Actually, I'm using it. I'm using it to prop up my computer right now. It's real. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it's cool that you actually started in the Southwest. I don't get to talk to a lot of people who started in the Southwest. I started my uh, my career actually in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. So, yeah. you know. Exactly 500 miles from Flagstaff. And yes, I know I've that. done many. I, I had a girlfriend in Flagstaff once, so I okay. have made that run at kind of the speed limit. No, not yeah, really. Sure. It's, it's literally a straight <laughs> shot. Like you, 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 you get onto the highway straight. and just, it's a straight line all the way to Flagstaff. Yeah. Nissan used to run a commercial for the Maxima that you could get 500 miles to a tank. And that's what they did on the commercials. They drove it from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Flagstaff, Arizona and uh, 500 miles on one tank of gas. That was their whole deal back then. Man, you got me missing green chili and red chili right now. That's all I'm mm. thinking about. Mm. Yeah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. We're totally getting off topic here. Hey, guys, let's uh, to, to get our conversation started today. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. What's your guys' current norm right now? Like, what, what's it looking like for you? Michael, I'll start with you. New norm is honestly not too different than the way things look right like if i look at my day in particular i wake up i go to work i come home i go to work and and somewhere in there i'm spending a little bit of time with my family and with my kids i mean it is a little different in that i am working from my master bedroom right now at home which is mighty pink there i see you like that hey we can change it too you, you got a color preference <laughs> you just tell alexa change that bad boy but you know i'm, I'm here we're, we're doing our best to do our part but as far as business is concerned you know we <clears throat> we've just found that that and, and and I mean, Jason, you've heard me speak from stage. I talk a lot about the BRT, like a lot about build relationships of trust. And, and during times like this, that has really proven to be a very valuable uh, thing for us. And so we're spending a lot of time, um, you know, just with our clients, with our, with our partners, walking them through this, helping support them in any way that we possibly can. I mean, our operations have shifted a, a little bit in that we are spending you know, much more time helping them walk through different types of scenarios that they, you know, dealerships have not been used to or accustomed to. Uh, and so that, that in and of itself is kind of exciting, I think, just because this is what we do in business. We are solutions providers. And so now we have an opportunity where we're facing a new type of a problem and we're, we're able to just put our brain power to work and, and, uh, and come up with different types of solutions. So What's the, um, like, what, what are the kind of the closure type setups for you guys? Like, I know it's different every single province and every single state, you know, uh, out where you are, Michael, right now, like, what is, what's the province saying? Like, how, how can you operate right now as a dealership? Yeah. Um, dealerships are open, but limited, right? So th this is Alberta, man. This is, this is as American as you can get in Canada. So they're like, you know, Confederate flag, you know, pre-Confederation flags flying on the back of four by four trucks and, you know, people saying, hey, you're not going to shut me down. But I mean, it, it economy has been hit pretty hard. Obviously, oil is our main main industry here and that's been pretty hard, been hit pretty hard. You can you can buy a six pack of beer cheaper than a barrel of oil uh, right now. And uh, I, dude, I don't even remember like like gas right now is 58 cents a liter. Wow, that's crazy. Which I mean, which we've never seen and I mean typically it's it's usually cheaper in Alberta, right? Like when I moved from British Columbia it was a buck 50 or a buck 60 a liter and then I moved to Alberta and it was 90 cents a liter and I thought that was crazy but to see it at 58 cents a liter you kind of go holy smoke. So so I mean People are concerned. There is a level of uncertainty. Like, how does this actually work? Are people buying cars right now? Are they not buying cars right now? Should I advertise? Should I not advertise? Will my advertising be insensitive right now? Is it not? You know, and so we're seeing kind of a mix, especially in the dealer community where there's like, no, screw this COVID thing. Full steam ahead, giddy up. There's still things that people are going to need, winter tire swap and, you know, all those sorts of things. And we, we want to be the brand of choice. <clears throat> and then I think there are those that are legitimately struggling. Um, you know, personalities come out where it's like, well, no, I wouldn't resonate with the full steam ahead 
marketing. So therefore I'm not going to do the full steam ahead marketing. And so we're seeing kind of a divide that way. That makes sense. Hey, Glenn, for yourself, you know, what's yeah, kind of your current norm and what's kind of the general temperature for, you know, dealers in your area? Well, my current norm is uh, there has been an increased amount of diaper changing going on <laughs> in my life. And that's uh, his. That's, I was going to say, that's not your diapers, right? <laughs> no, diapers. I, I, I used to be able to, uh, you know, avoid a little bit of that when uh, when I was leaving early in the morning, coming home late at night, but spending a lot of time with the family, which has been great, man. We've been doing a lot of things that we never had done before and really experimenting and learning to embrace and be grateful for the space that we have you know we've got a pond and we've got some land and just really uh uh developing our space right and so that part's been really cool i've been getting to know my kids on an even better level than i did before so as far as the personal side there's been all that as far as business goes i had to make a shift mentally uh quickly because i am a car guy my job is to prospect, get new leads, generate new customers. That's what I do. That's all like, that's what I've done for 20 something years. So I had to make a shift right in the beginning. As soon as I realized like, wait a minute, the prospects are busy right now. They're, they're trying to figure some stuff out right now. Like I had a bunch of people lined up for 800% club and they all were like, whoa, hold up, you know, chill out. So I had to shift from a, let's go get new customers mentality to a let's double down and truly over the top serve our current clients to make sure that they're getting everything that they needed. So I had to increase value. I was, I'm working with 34 dealerships across the country right now. And so I had to take what I normally give them and ramp that up um, and become, I mean, we already had great relationships, but become just even more like, yeah, I'm going to train your salespeople too. And we're going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this, you know, that type of thing and just really increase value for those current clients. So that's been the biggest shift. Uh, it's starting to shift back the other direction. I think the initial shock is starting to wear off and people are starting to realize, holy smokes, we can do this a different way. We don't have to do it the same way we always have. And so it's kind of starting to shift back. I'm seeing numbers starting to tick back up. Uh, a lot of dealers are, are starting to really perform and do well. Um, and what's most interesting is I think everybody's been woken up a little bit and they're like, wait a minute, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe there's a better way and, and maybe it's time for me to, to really learn and hone in and become an expert in my craft so that I'm better prepared if anything like yeah. this ever happens again. No, I'm so, I think I'm that's seeing. the interesting reset too, right? Sorry, Jason. I think like that, that is the interesting thing that comes of all of this, because I think all of us have been tracking for quite some time now that there have been those that have been saying, Hey, something's coming, right? Guys like Tony Robbins, Hey, the world resets like every seven years, you know, Gary v has been saying stuff is going to happen for a while. GC has been saying things. Glenn's been, I've been saying you, all of us on this call have been saying something's coming, but until that thing becomes real, you know, it's easy to sweep things under the rug. And so I think in a lot of ways, yeah, like I don't deny there's something out there, you know, and it's affecting people. And, and you know, God bless the, those on the front lines and the healthcare professionals and people putting themselves out there to help us out. But in the same token, it you know, you need something. It's just a, it's a sad part of human nature. You need something to happen in order for it to be real for you. Uh, but it, I'm inspired by the the shift like a lot of people are realizing that this has really brought the importance of serving first to the forefront if i can't sell what can i do i can serve right you know guys like grant talk about all the time service is senior to selling now a lot of people have been it's, pushed it's into value. the deep end of the pool that's you know, it, it, what it's can not I do enough to serve? that we just meet the, the customer's expectations this is all about going back and exceeding those expectations which by the way is not just a strategy that's actually the customer's expectation yeah, like, right. It's not their expectation that we just simply meet the transaction or like, okay, yeah. cool. Here's the transaction. We can move on. Like, no, they're expecting that we exceed their expectation and they get that because of every other, you know, retail type of, you know, experience that they have. Hey guys, yeah. I've, I've been talking to a lot of dealerships. I'm sure you guys have been too. And I, so much of this reminds me of the recession, not in the fat, not, not, not in the sense of how fast everything happened. I mean, holy crap. I mean, um, you know, Glenn, you were in the Southwest during the recession as well. And I was, I was in Albuquerque, you know, it was, you know, right around about five to six months when things 
really hit the fan. Sure. You know, it wasn't three weeks. <laughs> so like, you know, and it was, that was more of an economics thing. This is more of a social thing, but I'm finding that, you know, during that recession, I felt like there was two different types of dealers. There were the ones that viewed this as an opportunity to reinvest and then there were the ones that were, you know, putting their fingers in their ears and going, la, 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 this is just going to be a monster expense. Yeah, and yeah. I'm finding my conversations with dealers right now are the exact same. I got half of them looking at this as just a monster expense. The other half looking at this as an opportunity to invest. I'd like to kind of get you both of you guys' thoughts on that. Michael, I'll start with you. It is an opportunity to invest. If you look at what happened out of the last recession, Uber, Airbnb, GitHub, Slack, these are all companies that took an opportunity. They did not like, and if you really think about it, we have the same opportunity right now. Yes, this came on faster. Three, like, holy smokes, it came on fast. But also, if we were paying attention, it didn't come on fast. Uh, Glenn and I were at a conference in, when, when were we there? February? In, yes, in sir, Vegas. February, yep. And and we were at this conference, and they were on the on the big screen. They were popping up, like, all the countries in attendance. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. When one country came up there, I was like, "Yo, there could be people in this room," because we knew what was going on over on the other side of the planet. We knew there was an outbreak. So for those that were paying attention, it didn't happen in three weeks. It's been happening since October. Um, and so, you, you know, but again, it kind of ties into like if it's not real for me in my immediate ecosystem, then it's just must not. It's like when kids put the covers over their head and they're like, "If you can't see me, I can't see. Like I can't see you. You can't see me." Now, having said that, this is going to provide an opportunity just like it did for Uber and Airbnb to leverage existing resources to create a new way of doing things. And we're already seeing that. Uh, I've, I've been speaking to dealers who are like, look, I don't necessarily have a uh, digital retailing system that I use, but I've been able to move my paperwork online using DocuSign or Adobe Sign. I've been able to um, do home test drives. I've been able to do this sort of a thing. And I'm able to now shape shift my, my business model to meet some of the demand. And, and you know, it's funny, the, the ones that I've talked to who have been proactive in this way are finding that there is still a segment of people who are engaged in the buying process. Versus the ones that completely back away and they go, no, no, nobody's buying right now. I'm just going to make the, the number one mistake that I make as a salesperson and assume somebody's situation. Yeah, right. And so we are seeing innovation and I think not, this is a massive opportunity for us to innovate. And, and it's also, you know, just touching on what we were talking about before, those that understand that this forced us into a universal service first model are going to be the ones who can innovate faster. So yeah, and it, that's, and it, that's kind I of my take. I, yeah, and I think I want to add to that. I mean, clearly there's opportunity here. And here, here's what I see. And here's how I break this down. And here's how, here's how I think a, a lot of people can receive this and, and, and see it from, from a, a little bit different view. You have four responses to what's going on right now. I've seen all four of these responses from dealers across the country and from other businesses. You basically have four responses and I'll categorize them for you. You have your doomsday prepper. The doomsday prepper is like, holy crap, lock the freaking doors, bolt everything down, make sure we're good, turn off everything, turn out the lights, dude, freaking hide in the corner, grab the babies, like put your gas mask on and boom, right? You're a little too good at this response. Sorry. I know. I was just about to say, <laughs> he had this, this nailed down. <laughs> <laughs> so the doomsday prepper is there. I saw a lot of dealerships do that, right? Immediately barricade the doors. They go into a protective mode. The next type of person that we have in this situation, uh, business-wise and personal-wise, is you've got the survivor, right? The survivor's like, we're going to, we'll just, we'll do enough to get by. We're going to be okay. We'll cut back some things. We're not going to cut back other things, but ultimately self-preservation is what matters most. Okay. Whoever's name is on the building, I'm going to make sure to protect that person. The business has to stay here. That's the excuse, right? The business has to be, here. I'm sorry if you all get hurt in the process. It's just like the show survivor. You got to cut your own buddy's throat in order to win the game. Right. I think I talked to a couple of those today. Yeah. So we got some survivors, right? So we got the, we got the doomsday prepper. We got the survivor. Now we also have the underdog. 
Now, the underdog gets nasty at a time like this, right? The underdog gets rowdy. The underdog is like, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to increase my ad spend. I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy some inventory. I'm going out on social media. I'm going to tell everybody, screw you. There ain't no COVID, right? And I'm the underdog, and I'm going to get some bumps, and I'm going to get some bruises. I'm going to get some scrapes, but I am going to charge forward and run through any freaking brick wall that comes in my way. I'm not going to quit. No one's ever going to tell me what to do right? We have the underdogs. There's a place for that. And I, I know I know quite a few of my dealers that have that mentality right now, and they're freaking crushing it with this underdog mentality. Then we have the heroes. The hero from day one was like, I'm going to protect my people. Everything's cool. Everything's calm. Don't worry about it. We're going to come through this stronger, right? And they made all of the good decisions. They've continued to make good decisions with their people in mind, first every single decision being about their people how do we take care of our people how do we provide for our people how do we support our people how do we support our community how do we provide for our community those types of things so those, those are, are the, the ones four, that are seeing this as an investment right that's right that's right so those are the four responses that i've seen and been working with um, you know, a, a, across the industry, I suggest people lean on that underdog side or the hero side, whichever one fits your personality, the doomsday prepper and the survivor who wants to just go through this, man. Like, let's grow through this. Yeah, yeah let's Get let's better. kick some ass and take some names and let's come That's out right. on this on the on the other end a lot better. And during the recession, we saw that happen. Like we saw that yeah. happen a lot. But that's a fundamental mind shift. I yeah. mean, there are people, I mean, it is hard for someone who's just looking at this and all they're seeing is just this monster expense. And, you know, they, they don't see this as an opportunity to invest time and or money, you know, into their dealership, their people, their resources, their training. I was talking to a dealership the other day that is still training uh, their salespeople, even though their salespeople are laid off. So like, I'm going to ask both you guys, like, how do we how do we create that mind shift? Like, how, how do we shift that perspective and look at this as the opportunity that I think all three of us agree that it is? Michael, I'll start with you. Well, I think the thing became very real. And for those that, you, you know, being pushed into a corner isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? I'm not going to sit here and suggest my business hasn't been affected. We are all in this, like we're all in this together. But if I think about like, where, where did I get my mindset from? It's because of the lessons I've learned from past experience. I went through 08. I remember the, the, everything that happened in the markets. Every time there was an attempted terror attack, I remember nine 11. I remember, you know, I, when I really connect the dots, I remember the volatility of the eighties and the stress that I saw my parents as business owners go through. Well, each of those things have had an impact on who I am and how I choose to navigate this. And when my back, I've learned of myself from past experience, when my back's pushed up against the wall, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, maybe I'm a hybrid, but I think about my people. Cause like the reason I'm an underdog is almost from, it, it's for my people. It's my family. It's my employees. It's anybody that's associated with me, dude, I'm going to freaking knock you out. Uh, and, and it's because I care so deeply about them. So the, the opportunity here for a reset that I see is if you were a leader uh, in a business and, and you have not taken the opportunity to think about how this affects others, not just yourself, goodbye. You're, you're done. You're toast. You're not going to make it the next time this thing happens. If you, if you make it through this by the skin of your teeth, you're already, dude, if you make it like you're done, um, if you're not willing to learn and willing to take action from what you've learned, you're screwed. Like that's just a harsh lesson that people have to learn. And I've learned that lesson before. It's why today I I'm in a position where I care so deeply about other people. It's why I know it's why you do things like this podcast. And why you care about serving. If you didn't care about anybody but yourself, you wouldn't be doing this. It's a lot of work. You, know? you guys know it is. It's a lot of work. <laughs> um, and so this is the opportunity. I don't think there's anything I can, like, I can't teach you desire. That's a really good point. Um, Glenn, for yourself, for the people out there, it's just like, we, we want that mind shift, man. And I, I think there are people that do want to look at this as an investment and an opportunity, but they still, they're just 
It's like they got this like mental block where they just can't seem to visualize that. What would you say to the dealerships out there that are thinking that way right now? Well, re- regretfully, I, I can't change someone else's mindset. That's what a lot of people need to learn and understand. That's why they, there's so much division and arguments. And well, why don't they see it my way? Well, because you can't change somebody's mindset. Only yeah. they can. Only they can change the mindset. It starts from within. And it's an understanding of gratitude first and foremost. Having gratitude. Like reasons like like you and, and Cirillo and myself. I mean, dude, I used to be freaking homeless. Are you kidding me? I was homeless. I've been in jails. Like, I'm grateful every day. I'm like, bring it, dude. Okay, you know, COVID, uh, shutdowns, whatever, dude. I'm not homeless and I'm not in jail. So it's 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 a positive place. And so starting with gratitude, which a lot of people miss that. They're so they're always looking forward and not thankful for where they are. But then also it's funny, I've got this um, this was actually the quote today, and it's amazing, it's gonna come up right now. So I have a planner. Uh, that I sell. And every day has got a quote out there on the top. And the, the quote on the top was submitted by a guy named Terry LaPierre. And he says, keep your eye on the donut, not the hole. Oh, I like that. that. That's a good one. It is a good one. And that's what I, especially car guys eat a lot of donuts. So that's what I would, that's what I would say to some car guys right now, dude, is what do you have? Let's not focus on what we don't have. Don't focus on the hole. Okay, well, we can't bring people in the showroom. Great, don't focus on that. What can you do? What Mm -hmm. do you have? What resources are available to you right now? What can you create with that? There's a a story in the Bible. I won't get all biblical, but there's a story in the Bible, and ultimately it comes down to all of the miracles. Every miracle in, 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 in the Bible is always created with what was left. There was no miracle created on what was lost. It doesn't work like that. So shift your focus. What is left? What resources do you have available to you today? Be grateful that you have those. And how can you leverage that to move you forward once we get on the other side of this? I think that's awesome. I think focusing on what we do have control over, what we can do. And there's some amazing stories out there of dealerships doing that right now. I mean, I, that's I, what I, gratitude does, right? Right. Like, I, I'm, it, there's people don't understand the power of gratitude. It's it's no different than these glasses, man. The world is fuzzy when I'm not wearing my glasses. Gratitude is the lens I can put on b- by which I can see all those opportunities. Yeah, man. Dude, right? Like, focus on the don't, don't. Dude, there are going to be a lot of business owners sitting on donuts because this pressure giving them hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're that's saying that the truth <laughs> you know and it's because they're focused on the lack like and and you know that's what i love about what glenn said is if you're always focusing on the lack like this is this is going to be tremendously tough right mm-hmm. i know some people dude where it's the it could be the sunniest most beautiful blue sky and it's raining in their world Oh, yeah. It is pouring rain. And and unfortunately, we see that often where where people are navigating through a stormy world. And and it's because I'm convinced, and, and Glenn and I talk about this frequently, it's the power of true, sincere gratitude. Not just saying, hey, man, thanks, Jason. I'm grateful you mean, that you brought us on the podcast. <laughs> not the marketing, <laughs> right. the superficial. Like, wow, hey, Jason, I am so grateful that you brought me on this podcast. You could have invited anybody and you chose to reach out to me. And that warms my soul, man. Like that that makes me feel special and that changed the, you don't know, maybe that changes the trajectory of my day, my week. And so I feel so deeply grateful that somebody was thinking about me. That's a whole different game. And, and so people, when they're, when they practice this, this, this gratitude. And one of the things that I love Glenn does, it's part of his morning five, his ritual of five things he does to start a day, uh, is, is manifesting your gratitude because him and I and you and those that practice this know that when you start your day on the right foot, seeing opportunity, seeing abundance, it just, you're able to recognize more for which to be grateful for. It's crazy how it works. It's, it's not a spell. It's not, you know, we call it the law of attraction, call it whatever you want to call it, but that's how we see a shift in this industry. Imagine what would happen if leaders, even if they didn't feel it at first, dude, I'm passionate about this now. Like, yeah, sorry, but, but not sorry. 
Imagine what would happen go, go. if even if you didn't believe this, right? There's going to be there's going to be leaders, dealer principals, GMs who maybe are genuinely pissed off at their team because they think their team isn't doing anything for them. They don't know how to respond to leads. The BDC sucks. We got to change our vendors. But what would happen if you just created a habit of walking in and picking one individual from your team and saying, I'm so glad to see you today? Even if you didn't mean it at first, because you know what's going to happen? Their demeanor, their behavior is going to start to shift and you're going to start to see this scientific reaction happen. Holy crap. My team performs better when they're appreciated. My team does a little bit extra. And, and during a time like this, boy, do we need our team. You got 80 people. Maybe they've been furloughed. Maybe they've been laid off, whatever. You got 80 people, 50 people, 20 people on your team who all have varying life experience, who have different skills. First thing I did as a leader, when we started heading it, I called my entire team together and I said, I need your wisdom. See, I love that. I love being able to connect with people. Now, I actually, Again, this is actually coming from a handful of conversations that I've had this last week and asking dealers, you know, are they regularly talking to their employees that are on furlough or laid off? I was blown away to find out how many dealerships are not. Crazy. Yeah. In fact, I had one go, I'm not going to do it. In fact, actually, I had one even tell me their lawyer told them not to do it. I, thoughts on that, guys. Like, Glenn, I know you want to say something, so I'm going to start with you, Glenn. Like, what's your thought on this, man? <laughs> My thought is you better fire your lawyer. Are you kidding me? That's the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever heard. And, and you shouldn't talk to your people. No, just let them go. Let them go. No, that's the craziest thing ever, dude. My my uh the dealerships you know that i that i work with one of the first things that we talked about uh even even before the the pandemic is we have to have daily communication with all of our people so day, daily morning sales meetings the way that you start your day in your business is how your day is going to end simple as that so we want to make sure that we can set the tone see people don't understand they're watching you are watching experts that are creating the narratives right now. You're watching it. It's all over TV, right? The, and the, they want this narrative and they want this narrative. And so you're watching. Just watch, dude, and you can extract. This is just, why do you think the governors are on TV every single night at five? Why is the president on every single night at seven? I don't think Why are be, but... they doing that? Why are they doing that? They're doing that because they want you to feel and you to trust and they want to continue to keep the communication lines open right? Because they want you to elect them later in the year. That's really what they want. We need to be doing the same thing. Communicate with your people every single day. Let them know exactly what's going on. Let them know what your what moves you've made, what moves you're getting ready to make, what the plan is. Eliminate the anxieties. Eliminate the fears. That's the would be the opposite of what the other guys are doing. <laughs> exactly. But eliminate the fears and let them know that they're still a part of the team, whether they're sitting on the couch or whether they're, you know, no matter where they are, they're still a part of the team. That way, when we get on the other side of this, you don't have to go find 75 more people to work at your uh, uh, place of employment because the ones you didn't talk to for 90 days all got hired by my dealers that have been communicating with their people. Don't Which I've actually seen yeah. a lot of, by the way. Like, I don't know if oh, you guys, yeah. like, I, I've been shaking. talking to a lot of the sales guys that I'm super close with. I'm actually surprised to find out how many salespeople are making moves right now oh, yeah, um, yeah. to other dealerships. And when I ask them, like, why are you doing it right now? I mean, kind of talk about a crazy time to do it. And for a, the majority of them is because they didn't feel, they didn't, they, they did not feel wanted. They didn't feel appreciated. And, you know, they were generally concerned that there wasn't even going to be a place for them sure. when this was all done. And is, was there going to be something, a place they could actually come back to? Michael, yeah. your thoughts on this, on communicating to our furloughed and laid off employees right now? I think my genuine belief is that when you, t to today's standards, if you feel like you're over communicating, my promise to you is that you're barely communicating enough. People don't communicate the way they ought to communicate today. And so, and and maybe this is a generational thing too. Hey, I, my, my father works in my business still, right? So I know that there are certain things that I talk to my employees about that he was like, whoa, 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 whoa what are you doing? Like, hey, they, they shouldn't know about that. And that's none of their business. And I'm like, well, it is their business if I want them to grow and learn the business. 
And so my thoughts on the communication thing is I'm, I'm with Glenn. I would be, I'm communicating with them every single day. My team is all remote. I've got team members in Toronto. I've got team members in Utah. I've got team members in freaking Tbilisi, Georgia. I've got, you know, team members in Vancouver and in Edmonton and, and every day at nine, my time, nine 15, I'm on a zoom call with everybody. What's up? How's everybody doing? What's your success from yesterday? How are you feeling? How are you doing? If I get a sense on that call, looking at them, that somebody, somebody's not with it, I'm right into a Slack chat with them. How are you? How are you doing? Um, it reminds me of this scene from Saving Private Ryan when they're like, yo, Cap, how come we never hear you complain? And what does Tom Hanks' character says? He says, complaints never go down complaints always go up. That's why you never hear me complain. <laughs> That's true. And it's the same thing. So I'm, when I'm communicating with my people, first of all, you have to understand that the culture that I've established in my business didn't happen when COVID hit. The, the culture happened from the, from the beginning. It's been evolving from the beginning. And part of our culture is communication. And, and back to my, my, I guess maybe the first question you asked me, like the whole build relationships of trust thing, it's why I believe so deeply in that. It's why it, if I had to furlough my team members and knock on wood, thank the Lord, I don't have to. And, and I'm so deeply grateful for that. Um, but if I had to, the re the only reason I think my lawyer would recommend that I don't talk to any of my furloughed team members is because I didn't have a relationship with them to begin with. Right. That's a really good point. So, so if they're not talking to them, it's because they realize they're too late. Hopefully they take this as an opportunity to realize, holy crap, I'm late to the game here with my, with my most valuable asset. Mm -hmm. Well, and, let's actually and I need to sh shift on that, this on the communication train. You know, because I, I feel like there's a large amount of dealerships out there that are not communicating to their staff on a regular basis. And if they're not communicating to their staff, I can tell you right now, they're sure in the hell are not communicating to their customers on a regular basis. Yeah. And what they're communicating, I, I, look, I got better communications from when I went to go do my Walmart, like grocery pickup, than I did when I scheduled a <laughs> service appointment for my vehicle. Like, I'm just telling you, like I got an e I got a confirmation, you know, from Walmart saying it's been, it's been received. It's in process. Then I got an email identifying the seven steps that I need to take. All right. So that when I show up, I know exactly where to go, what to do. All right. Who to call, how to call all this stuff, you know? And then it was like, and then again, there was like, if you have any problems and it was like, and then I scheduled a service appointment with, you know, with my dealership to get my winter tires, you know, switched over. I showed up and they're like, I, I there was no explanation. I didn't know where to, I didn't know where to stand. I didn't know if, should I just stay outside and just kind of throw the keys at them? Like, <laughs> what, like what do you think Glenn was in Jason's grocery bag? Mm. I'm thinking, I'm thinking they did the same level of service for him, even though it was like a pack of baby carrots. That's probably what it was. No, like it could have been a pack of gum and they would have given I, you the same process popped into my mind. Zucchini. Was, zucchini. <laughs> zucchini. <laughs> was, was there zucchini Dude, in got, your grocery bag? I got bag. three kids under the age of nine. All right. Yeah. There was zucchini like, so goes into the bags of potato sauce. chips, like oh, 11 cereal. boxes of cereal. Crunch, and that's yeah. just for the week. <laughs> and this yeah. is Canadian potato chips, which means these are the good potato chip flavors. Um, yeah, ketchup. But you know, it's true. It's true, Jason. Like, <laughs> you got that level of service for groceries. Um, hey. And then I move into something high margin, and I don't get that same. I get the. You know what you get? You get this. Oh, man, you know, I, just, I was trying to. Oh, well, you know, I don't know how soon we're going to. Uh, things are different right now with coat, dude. Spare, you know what? Spare me the details. <laughs> like, I just want my tires swapped. <laughs> Dude, I, I just actually, want to store my tires. In, they actually yeah. asked me, like, well, do you have to do it right now? <laughs> wow. Nice. I do if I one want thing, my though, winter though, tires I'm, changed. One thing that I want anyone who listens to this or anyone that's viewing this, we have people watching live on Facebook right now. I do want, don't miss what just happened. So Jason, Jason was talking about communication. We were heading down that line, but... Don't miss what just happened. Jason just compared his service at the dealership with his service at Walmart. This didn't used to be the case. You Pretty see, the true. automotive industry, we used to, everybody had whatever standards for automotive. And then you had different standards for different areas. The internet has leveled the playing field in a very interesting way. And this particular event 
has really evolutionized people's mindset to where now the expectation has become the same. I expect the same experience, whether I'm shopping click list or I'm Amazon priming or I'm buying a car, the customer expectation has changed. So note that right there, put that one in your little pocketbook. You are now competing with everyone else that sells a product online. You are no longer just pro competing with other dealers. Yeah. That and it used to be officially changed. So, I mean, totally. Glenn, to, to your point, I mean, I have three kids under the age of nine. I mean, after I've now done all of this, just order in advance grocery shopping, why in the hell would I ever take my kids to a grocery store again? Oh, yeah. I was, I mean, this isn't new. It's been available at the grocery stores for a sure. while. I don't know what I was thinking walking into a store with three kids <laughs> under the age of nine and trying to grocery shop when it's like, yeah. I go click, 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 click online. I pull up, the gate opens up in the back. They throw it in. I drive <laughs> off. I'm like, no one's screaming. Right. I, nothing got thrown at me. There's no kids kicking on the ground, <laughs> kicking and screaming. This is wonderful. Brian First, Vinsock. you can see that this is you can see that this is a conversation clearly between three men, right? Because if we <laughs> yeah. never had to leave the house for anything, we'd be right. like in heaven. But the second thing is, you know, to your point, Jason, about the communication and and to just piggyback off of what Glenn's saying, why am I getting better and more concise communication on something that probably gave them you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the profit margin is on a bag of potato chips. Well, you know, it's really it, low. I mean, grocery store profit margins are incredibly low. Overhead is high. Union fees, all the things that go into it that we never really realize. Um, and so for, for 12 cents made on a bag of potato chips that they sell for five bucks in order to make that, they're communicating with you in a much more effective, concise way. They've put brain power into this. And I'm going to go spend 75000 on a whatever on a new truck or whatever, and I'm I'm left guessing at so many steps along the way. In a similar way, you know, piggybacking off your point earlier that if they're not communicating with their team, they're definitely not communicating with their customers. It's it's incumbent upon leaders to sit down and go, what do I need to communicate? Like they're you know, and I and I'm going to be devil's advocate. Maybe they're just stuck. They're like, dude, I don't know what I should be even saying. No, to my I think people. that's very valid. In fact, that's a great. You know, let's give give the people that are watching and listening a couple of takeaways. What are your some of the thoughts of the things that a dealership needs to be communicating to their customers right now? Um, I'm going to ask you, Michael, and then I'm going to jump over to you, Glenn, and get the same same answer, same question. So the first thing, and I'll speak specifically in the context of of COVID. When all of this started happening and as we started learning more information, the first thing that I did is I sat down with my team and I said, hey, we sat down as an executive team. Here is our tiered approach to how we are going to respond to things. So my team, right out of the get-go, like let's just speak specifically to furlough or affecting wages or anything. I told them exactly what tier I would be applying for the Canada wage subsidy. I told them exactly at what tier um, I would be affected personally. Like, hey, guys, I'm killing my wages. I'm not taking a dime. I told them when their wages would be affected. I told them that I was I would apply for the, what's that 40K that they're giving away? I'm like, at As this phase. Small business loan, yeah. The little, hey, do, whether I need it or I don't need it is irrelevant. Guys, here's all the layers of response that I can take to something like this. Here's also how I believe we should respond to our customers when our customers need some forgiveness or when they need a hand or when they need, here's how we approach it. Here's how we're going to do it. And they go, yeah. And then I open that meeting up and I say, give me your wisdom. What do you believe we should, what am I missing? What can we add? What would you do? All these sorts of things. Now, a lot of people, and I've done this in the past and I can understand why some leaders might shy away from it. My opening the floor to counsel, counsel, C-O-U-N-S-E-L, not C-I-L. When I open the floor to counsel, Glenn some of my employees in the past have perceived that as weakness. Oh, look at that. Michael doesn't know, doesn't know what he's doing. He needs our advice. If you have the right culture though, they realize how valuable I think I, I believe they are. And that builds them up to the degree where they're like, you know what, man, I would lay down on train tracks for Jason. 
I'd lay down on train tracks for Glenn. I'd lay, and, and so when you're all in this together, man, so that's the level of communication. I go right into the nitty gritty. Here's how I'm responding. Now, for those that have furloughed team members, get, get it out of your head that it's awkward that you haven't talked to them in the last three weeks. Send out an email to all of them. Hey, I'm thinking about you. I take ownership that I haven't reached out to you. Here's what I have been working on in your absence. Here's the plan. Here's how we're responding to whatever. Here's how we're responding to that. Here's what we're doing. So they see that there is activity that you're fighting to get your people back. That you're fighting to you're fighting for them, even though we've been faced with this unfortunate circumstance. Yeah, man. Hey, Glenn, okay. for yourself, uh, same question, but I'm going to change it just oh, oh so slightly. Um, communication to our customer database. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, as far as communication to the customers, here's the, here's, here's the, um, you, ever, you guys ever see that show like 24, like they did it over uh, yeah, 24 segments, like each was show awesome. was Canada, hour or whatever, Canada. Right? And all of those <laughs> things happened in like 24 hours. So here's the summary of what's happened, right? We all got hit like, pow, what is going on? Chaos. Ah, it's nuts. And everybody kind of like freaked out, right? Grab the gloves, grab the mask, hoard your food. You know, um, we're all going to be a lockdown martial law, like all this stuff, right? It was crazy in the beginning. And, and now that's kind of starting to wore off a little bit. So every single business in the world immediately made a COVID infomercial, right? Here's what we're doing. I even recommended it to my dealers. I'm like, you got to let the people know what you're doing. We have to communicate to the customer that you're clean and here's how you're going to do it. And here's the process. So on and so forth, right? <laughs> Great. That stuff, no more. All right. Yeah. Everybody's tired of hearing. Of our system now. <laughs> Everybody's tired of hearing about it, A, and now it's implied. It is inspected. It is expected for you to be clean and for you to be sanitary. You can no longer advertise that you are clean and sanitary. Nobody wants to hear that crap anymore. You just need to be clean and sanitary. So right now, and when we are communicating with our customers, we have a global population, okay, of people that have decision paralysis right now. Decision paralysis kicks in when there's too much information and they don't even know what information's real or what's not real, right? They're trying to sort through what's, is it a lie? Is it freaking UFOs? Are we getting a freaking, you know, what, what's going on? Nobody knows. They're like, maybe that's true. Maybe, maybe there's a, a child sex trafficking ring. Maybe it's that, maybe it's politics. Maybe, maybe there is a COVID. Nobody freaking knows. And they're just like, ah, Will somebody please tell me what to do? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that one audio Will clip. I'm somebody sorry. Somebody <laughs> please tell me what the f to do. That's like what the world is screaming right now. So my message. Can you do that me... scream one more time for us, Glenn? I, I'm gonna make it my phone ringer from this point on. <laughs> sorry. So what's what I would suggest from a marketing standpoint and for leaders in business, I want you to reach your hand out grab my hand as a consumer and guide me down a path that I have to make very few decisions, guide me down the path, make decisions for me and lead me to the promised land with my well-being in mind from the front. That's what we need to communicate right now. That's what I'm telling my, I'm back to prospecting. I cut off prospecting for a little bit, poured into my dealers. I'm going to continue to pour into my current clients, but now I'm letting dealers know like, yo, I can help. Here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to make it nice and easy for you. Follow me. Follow me. Those are the those are the words that that I would suggest for people who are trying to figure out how to market right now. Think with that mindset. Follow me. And you, you know, what? I think right now we you. take the time to hone in that talent, you know, to kind of practice and, and get better at it. Then we're, we're going to be, you know, one government says we can poke our heads out the doors and you know people can start exploring showrooms again we're going to be that much better off but we got to do it now like that's something i'm like right now like the, the action is not later two months from now or, or whatever time it is when we're told we can pop our heads out and start exploring like we need to take action right now hey guys yeah. i know it's getting towards the end of our time i gotta say today. something real quick i don't yep. mean to interrupt because i know you're about to shut it down but you you said we are we are gonna be better off and i want to challenge that just a little bit because a lot of people are saying that right now oh it's good we're gonna be better you, you don't think the we're uh cream will rise here we're gonna lose some people that probably shouldn't have been i, I, in, I in think the first that place. i think that most people 
need to come to grips with the reality that if you don't change something right now, it, you're not going to be better off. Mm -hmm. You are going to be worse off. You're not just going to coast Good through point. this. You are not just going to go, okay, well, everything's back to normal and I can go back to being a, a dirt back. No, no, no. <laughs> you better change right now. You better start studying. You better start learning. You better raise that leadership lid because you are going to get smashed as this drags out. You're going to get smashed on the other side. Do not just think that you're going to get through this because that sounds all fun and hunky dory. Yeah. Not real, especially in business. Now, you know, on, on a personal level, that's a whole <clears throat> different deal. But when it comes to business, you better freaking get your, you, you better put your, your little lab coat on and get in the lab and start working on your freaking science and your chemicals and figure out yep. what, what you're going to put together. Otherwise you're toast on the backside of this. Dude, we showed our kids that what's that movie the the not the Lord of the Rings the one the the Hobbit, yeah 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 right because it's basically movie night is every night at the Cerillos pretty while much we're at our house. Right, right. <laughs> hey, what movie are we gonna watch tonight? And we've been holding them off on the Hobbit forever. So we show them the yeah. Hobbit the other night, right? We show them the Hobbit, and um and you know you look at those dwarfs, man, the resilience, the battle tested. But to your point, Jason, when when did they sharpen the axe? When they were go when they were in battle or did they sharpen their axe before they showed up to the battlefield? And not only that to go a step further, they don't just sharpen their axe before battle, they practice battle before battle. Right? Yeah. And so I love what you're saying like now is the time and and to to Glenn's point, like if you're not going to commit to changing now, nah bro like nobody's gonna have time for yeah, that things have trouble. shifted and and you know further to that it's like people go well, i don't i don't know i've been here and and so i'm sensitive to this they go, i don't know what i'm supposed to do what they, they, they turn into barney fife well now what are we gonna do right they're like oh, i don't you know i just gotta head back to mayberry i've never had to fire my gun you know and uh and you got a and career the, professional voiceover. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah. That, that's where's, the where's, that, where's Aunt Edna? What, is, what does Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Edna have to say about all Aunt, this? Aunt Edna. What does Aunt Well, Oh, wait. She goes, no, I got to ask my next question because my next question might be a perfect one for Aunt <laughs> Edna. <laughs> yeah, so. <it's> perfect. <laughs> So hey sorry guys, all right to finish this off all right I, I love finishing off each podcast with my favorite question all right and i i'm going to ask michael cerulio first uh, but maybe aunt edna is going to come out and answer the question i'm not 100 sure we'll oh, see here the pressure but... <laughs> can't keep a straight face right oh, now i can't wait <laughs> what on. is pissing michael cerulio off you know what's really pissing me off is that the only, the, you know, the difference between stupid people and dead people. The only person it affects is them. They don't, nobody knows the difference. You know what puts a bee in my bonnet? <laughs> Your bonnet. I don't know, man. You know, like, honestly, dude, there's not a lot that makes me mad. It's crazy. Like, I'm not, what, what pisses me off, man? What pisses me off is when there's an opportunity spoon fed to you and you don't take it. You want to know what really grinds my gears? And by the way, Aunt Edna has learned if you walk around the house naked long enough, your neighbors chip in to buy you curtains. It's delightful. <laughs> oh man, now we off the rails. Yeah, you know, like that's the thing that really grinds my gears is like, you know, the, 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 there's no difference between, you know, like when, when, when you're dead, you don't know that you're dead. It only affects everybody else around you. And the same goes for when you are stupid, you don't know that you're stupid. It only affects everybody else around you. And this is your time to look inward. Like if you just think we're all sitting here saying what we're saying and the words sound pretty, no, it's because we've had plenty of times Today, I failed 800 times just today. I've had a lot of opportunities to look inward and be like, what would I do differently tomorrow that I didn't do today? How would I change? How would I evolve? How would I shift? And so, you know, what grinds my gears, it's like Peter Griffin, right? Like mm -hmm. from a family, guy. you know, what really grinds my, you know, like <laughs> it, what grinds my gears, <laughs> what grinds my gears, man, 
is when an opportunity is right there, but because you were focused on the hole, not the donut, you completely missed it. And that is one thing for me. It's not so much what pisses me off. It's what freaks the crap out of me. What freaks me out are not things I cannot control. COVID does not freak me out like the way it's freaked a lot out a lot of people. What freaks me out is mediocrity because I know I can control that. I know I can do something about it. I'm the kind of guy, my wife, she's afraid to fly. She hits the turbulence and it's like, whoa, I'm the kind of person that I'm like, yo, if this plane's going down, I am cracking jokes all the way to the ground because there's still something in my control that I can, that I can do despite being acted upon or whatever. Like I choose to be the actor. So it pisses me off when people choose to be a victim, not an actor. Well said, well said <laughs> from all of those different personalities that are built inside of Michael <laughs> Shut up now. It's my turn. Now you shut up, Ann Edna. <laughs> Come on, This is going to be like the best audio podcast like we put out. Can you put in some of that like Victorian? Put in some of that Victorian like harpsichord music there. behind her. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. I put a mic drop right, there at the end off. for you for your sound people. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when Cirillo got done, I was like. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> Um, All right, Glenn, you're I'm up, like buddy. Michael. What you, what you is asked, pissing uh, Glenn Lundy off? Yeah, you you, you kind of asked two guys that don't really get mad at a whole lot. Um, an interesting question. That, you know, um, what 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 pisses me off and stuff. I I don't. I'm a very. I'm not. It's like Cirillo said, man. I'm in, I'm I'm in control of my world. Like, I, I I played victim role until I was thirty, and I know what that I know what that looks like, and allowing other people to control my emotions. So. I guess I, it, uh, what really pisses me off, I would say the only thing that really pisses me off probably would be people's inability to understand that the fact that we are different is what makes life beautiful. Well said. Um, I think that would be the only thing, man, you know, like all this division. And yes, I have a different opinion than you and you probably have a different opinion than so-and-so and and -and so-and-so has a different opinion. But if you were to take a puzzle, if you took a puzzle and every piece was exactly the same, like it would suck. It'd be boring. (laughs) Each piece has to be cut and shaped a certain way. It's got to have a certain pattern on it. And when you put it together, it creates something amazing, truly incredible. So we need doomsday preppers. We need survivors. We need underdogs. We need heroes. We need all of those people so that we can create this amazing thing called life to where we can find ways to serve each other with our our unique gifts. And so I think that's probably the only thing that pisses me off. I hate seeing people fighting online, trying to change other people's mindsets. No, let's not change other people's mindsets. Let's embrace, learn, take in we don't have to agree let's just embrace learn take in love one another and see what we can create man of it you know i'm just it. really pissed off because i share i share the back 40 with the lundy family and now there's all these goat turds all over my back 40 have you ever lawn mowed a dry turd <laughs> I'm, I'm that sure thing explodes <laughs> Oh, Judge Graham's called me three times. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to jam with me today. For everybody out there that's watching and listening right now, I would love to connect with you fine gentlemen. All right, r- quickly, what is the best way to connect? Michael, I'll start with you. Hit me up on LinkedIn, Michael Cirillo, C-I-R-I-L-L-O. I'm spending a lot of time over there. It's slowly becoming one of my favorite places to hang out on the interweb. So LinkedIn's the best place. And of course, you know, if you're in the automotive industry specifically, check out the Dealer Playbook podcast and you can follow us on our Facebook page. And look out for uh, Michael's holiday uh, mix tape that will be coming out uh, here in December as well. Um, he will do it this time, I guarantee it. Uh, Glenn, for yourself, what is the best way for someone to connect with you? Yeah, do me a huge favor. Just go to glennlundy.com. When you go to glennlundy.com, you can get links to the Rise and Grind show, links to my Instagram, my LinkedIn, my Facebook, all of that stuff. So whatever your preferred plat- platform is, you can even link to our podcast after the grind, which is me and Aunt Edna over here, where we get together on Friday afternoons. You can link to that as well. But that's all at glennlundy.com. 
Awesome. Hey guys, again, thank you so much for taking the time to jam with me today. This has is been. Is this the part where we stare into? This the has camera? been. Yeah, this is the part we get to stare into each other's eyes. Are you ready? On the count of three, we get to stare into each other's eyes. Go. Okay, that was fun. Hey guys, thanks again. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.